The Christopher Nolan retrospective continues at the BFI IMAX with another chance to see what I consider to be one of the greatest space epics of all time, Interstellar. It had made a big impact on me when I saw it here in Genuine IMAX Film in 2014 and I was curious to see if it would have the same effect on me all these years later. So keep watching to find out what I think of this IMAX 70mm presentation. There aren't many cinemas left with the capability of screening the ultimate IMAX 1570 print format, but those that can are now reaping the benefits. A full house on a Sunday morning can't be something experienced very often, but that was the case for this presentation of Interstellar. At a time when lower quality video projection is the norm, the possibility of seeing a great film in the best projection method ever developed simply has to be taken. I often say to people that if you haven't seen any of these Nolan films in their original IMAX 70mm format, then you haven't really seen them at all. After this second chance to see Interstellar in genuine IMAX, my opinion in this regard is now even stronger. And so, into that wonderful auditorium once more. There is always a personal introduction to an IMAX screening and these introductions seem to be even more enthusiastic and better received when it's for a 70mm film. Welcome to the BFI IMAX, Britain's largest cinema screen for today's showing of Interstellar on film. The film has already been out for nine years. Thank you very much everybody to come in to the BFI, we love showing film and please do join us when Oppenheimer comes out, it's going to be amazing, especially here, so please do come. So ladies and gents, sit back, relax and enjoy the IMAX film experience. When I saw the film here in 2014, I was sat in the very front far right seat. This time I sat right at the back, which I thought might give me a somewhat different impression. It was one of the first 4K discs I ever purchased, as I knew it would be a great way to start, owing to its IMAX origins. It didn't disappoint, and I highly recommend it to anyone who collects 4K discs. But however good it is, I don't think it compares to seeing the real thing here at the BFI. I met quite a few fellow enthusiasts at this screening and I asked a few of them for their impressions, starting with young Roland, who seemed rather thrilled by the whole thing. Was that your first time seeing Interstellar? Yeah, and my first time seeing IMAX film. Real and IMAX what did you film. think of that experience? I thought that was absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything so... it was so natural, you know. It really sort of captured the spirit of the film, I think, having it on that format, you know. it's. It, Digital has is cleaner, but it looks so natural and so sort of engaging having it on film, so I really enjoyed it. And if Roland hadn't summed it up well enough, Jim Hurd gave me a one-word answer when I asked him for his summary, and that was excellent. I also asked a few others to give me their thoughts, unfortunately just as a 3pm telephone alarm test went off, but we carried on regardless. I'm not yeah. going to forget that. That was no. incredible. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. The seats were so, uh, shaking. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It was wonderful. Yeah. It was a religious experience. Yeah. My first 70 mil film was L6 at the Metropole Victoria God, in 1961. A... And how does this compare to the oh, quality well. of that? <laughs> um, well, I was so young, but the experience, it, it never, never goes away, does it? And this is cinema. I'm sure I could have got many more plaudits, but perhaps that will have to wait for the next IMAX 70mm. And we don't really have too long to wait. Well, my recollections from nine years ago seeing this film from the very front row were exactly spot on. So everything I remembered about Interstellar really was true. And I think 
it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in a cinema anywhere. I think Tenet is probably the better looking film on IMAX film. There's a lot of reasons for that, you know, the daylight, the sunlight, the Caribbean settings or wherever it is, but Interstellar really does feel to me like the closest you're going to get to going into outer space in lieu of Concorde not flying anymore, but really closest you're going to get to flying in outer space without actually going into outer space. Absolute classic and the presentation here absolutely perfect. What more can you say? Next time it's on, which is the weekend after this one, they've got three screenings here they've just announced. You better get here from wherever you are. Fly in, get a boat in, whatever it takes. Don't think I'll see you here, but I'll see you here for Oppenheimer. Take care.